This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 197 of The Real Word. Word is up. Oh my gosh, we're so close. I always, cl- it's, I feel like I never know what number we're on. Like it's a surprise to me yes, every time. Yes, you forget <laughs> in seven days every time. Hey, the word is every up, but, but your attitude, Nicole, I want to just, before we jump into the rackets and the marketeer, oh, your attitude gosh. is down on these last the last couple of podcasts, you know, I just, I feel like you're not in it with me. Well, I, I, I don't want to use the word attitude because I'm not yeah. giving attitude. My energy maybe has changed. I, yeah. I, I think, I think this is a racket. I, 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 I've been, I told you at like the headphones and then like, I feel well, like there's a delay and then I'm staring at you, but I'm supposed to stare at the camera. I, I like having you next to me instead of, mm. instead of like this. And then I have to stare at myself. The whole thing is, is it throws me off. Nicole, this is the real world here on The Real Word. Sometimes yeah. you got to go virtual. I mean, it's just not... Honey, I'm doing it. I'm just... It's... it's I It throws off my mojo. Well, next, next week's show, we're going to be live together. And episode 200, we're definitely going to do that one live together. So you should be bringing the energy on those. Don't mail this episode in just because... I haven't mailed anything in. I'm, right. I'm here. I have everything open. Usually I can look at your screen. So now I'm having to toggle the shit. I don't toggle. Be a toggler. I'm Be a good toggler. Doing, I'm doing my best. All right. So. Racket, racket number one, Zillow making a whole bunch of news over the last couple of weeks. We have an update to our story in San Antonio, Texas that we've been talking about. Zillow is now seeking to sell 7,000 homes for $2.8 billion after they have halted flipping, which was a couple weeks ago. Now, before this article just hit, this is a brand new piece Mm -hmm. of news that Bloomberg is reporting. We're reading the Bloomberg article off of Yahoo Finance, which we'll link below. There was an insider article earlier this week, or maybe at the end of last week over the weekend, something like that. Zillow is selling hundreds of homes in places such as Atlanta, Phoenix, and Houston. An insider mm-hmm. analysis found almost two-thirds were listed for less than it paid. So you, then that that basically created an uproar. Oh my gosh, Zillow is going to crash the market. They're selling hundreds of homes for less than they paid. That's going to drive down the prices of all these other homes. Now we, we find out that Zillow is actually seeking to sell the 7,000 homes that they are currently holding for $2.8 billion. I just want to make one thing clear before we get into this, Nicole. Okay. Hundreds of homes and thousands of homes are not going to crash this market. Mm -hmm. We are in need of 5 million homes approximately to meet current buyer demand. So even if they sell 7,000 homes at a loss, which it's not a loss because they over paid for these homes. Go back and and watch some of our recent episodes where we talk about this. And I'm going to give you the update in just a second here on San Antonio, Texas on that overpay. But if they sell these homes at market value, 7,000 homes, regardless of what they paid, this is not going to crash the market. So let's be clear on that. But Nicole, what do you think is going on here? Why are they now choosing to sell all of the homes that they're holding but, you know, based off of, uh, you know, stopping the flipping and all of that. Why are they going to sell all this inventory? I can't even pretend to know. I, I actually read your feed. So you posted this on your Instagram. Was that last night? Well, I posted the the insider that you and I were yes. texting about recently. Yes. And, and there's so many conspiracies. Did you did you oh, read? You it, got so many comments. It the was, comment thread that the conspiracies are going like crazy. I mean, go, go over to the, the Byron Lazine Instagram. You can check out this, this and, thread. And, I mean, people were throwing shit out there. And then it's funny because I, I think one you sort of you like bit back on. He's like, oh, yeah, you're probably right. I, I just figured like it's like no one is no one even knows what the hell is really going on. I, um, I mean, I wasn't being controversial in this thread, but no, I'm like, you not know, at all. some of these are so ridiculous. I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know about that. You know, I, I mean, there, there was there was some crazy stuff. There was a really good comment, though, Nicole. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Well, first of all. Yitzi, I like Yitzi. Yitzi writes, it's all for IPO purposes. I have no idea what he's talking about. Zil- well, Zillow is, asked, is already a publicly traded company. It's uh, like, and then one lady there's no IPO asked, happening there. Gave you the definition of it. I mean, the whole thing was, the, it, it really, it spiraled into so many different directions. You got some, some people saying they deserve it. I don't, know, I don't know what that even means. I mean, listen, they deserve what? All the data that they're collecting off of this? Even right. if they sell these homes for less than what they paid, they're now 
A B testing. Oh, uh, se- uh, homeowners really react to this offer in this right. way. And yep. when they come back out to eight to twelve percent fees, you know they're going to have it more redefined. Or like, what ancillary products can we sell? based off of all these transactions we're doing. Right. Like they're not just focused on buying and selling homes like like you little realtors out there. Us us little realtors. Yeah. I gotta well, I gotta throw myself in that mix. But I'll I'll be honest too, Byron. I mean, we're starting to offer out um cash offers too. I'm yeah. probably going at least once a week, you know, at this point, um, having conversations with sellers that are looking for an instant offer. So again, it it's not a it's not a bad idea. I, I and I don't and I don't think that that's what's necessarily happening here. Um, I think again, I'm I'm with you. I mean, they're definitely collecting data. I mean, you had said to the beginning from the very beginning too that they're, you know, trying to get brand awareness out there, which I I'm certain that they are. I mean, I'm on like silly like board meetings that have nothing to do with real estate, and they're buzzing about the fact that Zillow has paused these purchases. Listen. So it's I mean it's. You you can't you can't get this kind of PR off of a TV commercial like th- they're getting awareness around the fact that they are willing to buy people's homes direct. Do more homeowners know today that Zillow is willing to buy their home direct than last year? Oh, Oh, one hundred percent, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely yeah. they do, and so and yeah. so they've really, you know, to your point, brand or you know what we talked about before the brand awareness. Uh, are they building some brand loyalty on on the people like my wife's cousin in San Antonio who sold two homes direct? By the way, update on that before I forget. The update there is that, okay, so we had two homes. If you missed this real word that we talked about this on, two homes that, that they sold directly to Zillow for 1% fees that were forty dollars or $50,000 over all the comps in the neighborhood, Okay. Now, one of those homes is back on the market for exactly what they paid for it. So they only had a 1% fee, but now they're selling it, obviously, with one of their Zillow offer agents. So they're in position here to potentially maybe break even or lose homes, which is in line with what this insider article. Now, I, I want to go back to my my Instagram feed here. One person said tax shelter. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um you know they're still operating at a loss, so, so I don't think they, they're Zillow's worried about paying taxes. But but here's one from Jeff Walker: revenue. Lots of people don't understand revenue is not profit. They're likely doing it for data, which said testing for how to make money on all the ancillary services. But here's the other part of, of that that he didn't expand on: revenue. This is a publicly traded company. Their stock and and show the graph uh, from this yep. Bloomberg. Uh, this Bloomberg article, okay? Look at their stock. It went up over 200 in February or March, and it has just been on a downhill slide all the way up until now where it's trading in the high 90s. I think today it got as low as 92. I've been a buyer. It hit in the into the 80s about 30 days ago. I was a buyer back in, in the 80s. I'm a buyer in the low 90s. They are grabbing this $2.8 billion that they have in inventory back on their balance sheet to pop the stock next year. Last week or whenever we were talking about like what it, what is Zillow doing? Uh, why did they or 2 weeks ago why did they stop buying homes? They're going to pop the stock again in 2022. Buy the stock right now. They're going to put this money back on the balance sheet and the stock is going to go up. That's when I saw this that they're dumping all 7,000 right now for 2.8 billion. This is a portfolio for Zillow. They're not concerned that a few homes in Phoenix are going to sell for less than what they paid. And I say few relative to the market, okay? Thousands of homes are not a big number. They don't control the market, okay, guys? This is a a very little amount of homes coming onto the market. Now, this is a portfolio to them, $2.8 billion. They lose $100 million on this deal. So what? The data that they collected, uh, the ancillary services that Jeff mentioned in the Instagram comment, all of that means more to them than the money they lost and the information they gain going forward. So uh, it, it becomes a little bit more clear to me, knowing that they're selling all of them, that this is all about the stock. Good. Good. Uh, look at Nicole. She she she's like Sleepy <laughs> Joe over there. Did you see? Uh, <laughs> did you see our president? This is not a political comment, by the way. But did you see him passing out in the uh, 
There was some global conference that he was at this no, week. No, I didn't. We're gonna start calling you Sleepy Nicole. What are we gonna? We're gonna pop that photo up too. Yeah, pop we'll that see, photo like, up. He's he's in his mask. I think it was the mask that was causing him oh, to fall asleep. Oh, it's like the carbon dioxide. It's like carbon dioxide poisoning. Yeah, I I I got your back, Joe. I think. Yeah, it was the mask. you inhale oxygen and we exhale. Yeah. Oh, well, whatever it is. What? <laughs> hey, see, you have no excuse, Nicole, because you're not wearing a mask. It's We're just living in a virtual... No, I'm we're, wearing we're, freaking headphones. I feel like it's just as bad. We're living in the metaverse right now. Facebook's metaverse. Oh, meta. Ugh. Imagine when we can do a podcast together. We're like, we'll be sitting. We'll be in two different states. Yes. But we'll be sitting on the couch together. Just... Ooh, it'll be like, uh, what's that? I feel like everybody for Halloween was Star Wars this year. Did really? you notice that? Yeah, like uh, there were lots that. of there was lots of lots of it. Yeah, well, he I think that's was every too, year though, probably right. But like that, they had those like holograms. It's like a hologram. We'll be like yeah. a hologram. We'll be sitting in a living room or a kitchen together. Well, it's like, have you seen any of Oprah's podcasts? She does that, like legit. Like it looks like they're together. Like, She's already sitting. in the metaverse. She's in it. You guys, oh, I think oh. I saw her do one with Obama like that. Is that, uh, is that yeah, true? Yeah, I believe I it was Obama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was him, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow, a lot of presidential talk here. A lot of presidential talk. Well, Bracket. because that's because today is... Um, President's Day? No, it's election day, honey. Oh, that's right. November 2nd. Yes. Yeah. Yep. It's okay. election day. Ne uh, racket number two. Mm -hmm. Nearly one in three adults get adults. financial support from the bank of mom and dad post-COVID. Adults getting support amid widespread job losses and sudden financial turmoil in 2020. Many adults found a safety net, their parents. Mm -hmm. A year and a half later, nearly a third of millennials between the ages of 25 and 40 still receive financial support from their parents, according to a new survey by personal finance site Magnify Money. Okay, so this could be uh, for paying for their cell phone plan, Nicole. Does that sound familiar? It's very familiar. <laughs> or, or covering auto insurance. 55% of parents with adult children say they provide financial support to their kids at least occasionally. Okay, mm -hmm. so they're in a jam. Oh, it's okay, honey. You spent all... All your money on Netflix or, or, you know. A really expensive car. I feel like people do that. As soon as they get a job, they buy like BMWs. And yeah. Their, their car payments are like $1,000 and that's all they're making. You went out to dinner. Who, who's the, uh, you went out to dinner at Salt Bay and, and the guy, you know, bounced the salt off of his forearm onto your steak and now you don't have money to pay your cell phone bill. You know, we'll pick it up for Look you, honey. It. Or Go for like, it. oh, you want to live in New York City? Like, it's, I'll pay for your rent yeah. to be in New York City. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, L last year, 52%, 52% of all millennials were living in their parents' home. That doesn't surprise me. Does that surprise you? That does not surprise me at all. 52% like, yeah, last year were living in their parents' think home. Think about the cities, right? Like, give up the rent, so, come back home. Like, you can work You can work from home, so you don't have to be. Like, th this I feel like sur this surpasses the previous high in 1940 mm -hmm. when 48% of adults live with their parents. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not surprised. We're talking about a, a a very small time in history where we were in a very unique situation, so that does not surprise me. Well, I'll tell you why it surprises me in just a second. Uh, you know what's interesting about that 1940 data, though? 19. We we are building homes in the last decade at the same level. You have to go all the way back to the 40s to to be building at this level, which like when we talked about in the last racket, having this mm -hmm. lack of inventory. We still need 5 million homes. It's because of the last decade of the lack of building. It's mm -hmm. 1940. So like we also don't have the inventory, which is similar to 1940s. Right. Obviously, you know, like you said, the pandemic as well. But I'm going to switch over to a Realtor Mag article, Millennials to Keep Housing Strong for Years to Come. Okay. So if 52% of millennials, one out of two millennials are living at their parents' home, 37% of buyers this year, this is according to Barron's in this Realtor Mag article, were were home buyers, or 30% of all home buyers rather, mm -hmm. were millennials, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if 50% of them are still living at home, this means this market still has a long leg to it. Long leg. Long legs. Not like 
your not legs. Not a scarred, not a scarred have the leg. scars on them, but not a scarred leg. Long legs. Long legs. Yep. Because if one or two millennials are still living at home, we know a lot of millennials want to buy a house. We saw that right. over the last couple of years. We've been seeing that even before the pandemic, mm-hmm. and they're going to start to buy eventually, especially if eight million of these jobs get filled up. If if millennials want to jump in there and fill some of these jobs up, they may be buying sooner than they think. Okay, so they're. they're using the same number of adults ranging from 26 to 41, uh, comprise of about 22% of the population. And it's why the housing uh, market has been watching this age segment for so long because it's a big portion of the population. They are in their buying years. So I, I don't know. I think this is a good thing for us. Yeah. This, well, this they're, whole also, racket. they're also saying that uh, the millennials are approaching their peak earning years too. So they're, they are, and they've been saying that for the last couple of years. So we're like in the well, midst of that. We're such a, there's such a huge spread there. I mean, 25 to 40, you know, I mean, there's. Hey, so, so yeah, maybe they could get down payment from their parents. Maybe that's the next thing they ask for is, is forget the cell phone bill and the insurance payment. Give well, me the, Give me I'm the sure down payment will. to my home. Let me get you, well, they let want me get them out of the to house. Get out of the house. Yeah, they want them out. So they'll give you the, the down payment. Of, I mean, you can get it as low as 5% at this point. Just gift it over. Get the fuck out. Not knowing that 50% of millennials are still living at home. I, I would have thought like, uh-oh, are, are we like like going through all the millennials buying houses here in the last couple of years that are like wanting to get out of the apartments? Nope. We got plenty of millennial buyers for years to come. So agents great news for you not a racket at all uh, it is a racket the ones that are still living at home between the well, ages easy. 26 and 40 no i mean not in every situation there's some situations where where it makes maybe sense they're still in for school sure. maybe yeah, they're back I, to school I, mean, I take that back I, this is the first time i've ever taken anything back on this podcast easy. and yeah. i take that back but that the fact that one out of two are living at home okay one out of two don't have a special situation okay maybe not but not again, we, we are 40, talking no. about a pandemic here, though. I mean, Nicole, it's, it, I, I'm, I'm, and, and again, yeah, COVID's all over. Just go listen to Bill Maher's uh, it's all over. show on HBO. It is over. Yeah. It's ended. Okay, mm-hmm. so you know, take you know. Sometimes though, like I, like my I I was on my mom's cell phone bill until I think maybe a year ago, a year and a half ago, um, and it's funny though because she was using it for tax purposes, but I, and I wasn't able to use it, but, um, so there may be some of those things too going on here where my yeah. parents are paying for some things, you know, it's, yeah. I mean, I know some people that are like, they, they still have a mobile card of their parents and they're in their late forties. So and their parents forgot about it is what happened. Well, I mean, that's, <laughs> it's not called support. That's called getting old and forgetting. Maybe, maybe. All right, mar- anyway. marketeer of the week, how to win referrals and leads on Instagram. The broke agent was featured in this in He's an article. He's popping up a few heads here. I like it. I, I like to see his his noggin in the morning. Yeah, they had his, uh, his photo in here two or three times. I thought that was a little extreme. No Matt Leonetti photo. I might have I put Leonetti up on that photo, but the broke agent, and he just came out with a ebook. I believe he calls it ebooks. Mm-hmm. Nicole, do you, do you go? Do you do much ebooking? I don't book actually ever. Ever. No, I, think I have a I have a book in my backpack that I'm supposed to be reading it right now. But I think it's more of a pamphlet. Anyways, he should call it an e pamphlet. <laughs> do you ever see that that curb your enthusiasm? <laughs> see, I, I haven't, but I would totally read a pamphlet right. way before I'd read a book. Yeah. B A marketing tip: call it an e pamphlet. You'll get people like go. Nicole White to read your content instead of an I e-book. just need some bullet just give me the bullet points and then I'll you know I'll, I'll still highlight I'm a highlighter so the uh the, the the curb your enthusiasm episode Larry David is at a an event like a dinner party for uh the character that played George in mm-hmm. Seinfeld I don't yep. know his real name but anyways he's playing himself in real life and he comes out with this book and it's called acting without acting and Larry goes up picks up the book he says it's more of a pamphlet. And he tells George, he's like, ah, I'll read it with dinner. You know, George really took took offense to that because he put a year of change into his of his life into writing this book, which was very a thin. It, it was a pamphlet. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so the broke agent, he talks about in his ebook, which is not in this article, but you, you can go and on the close.com, you you can uh, get access to this pamphlet uh, mm-hmm. that, that he wrote. 
Instagram stories for agents, 12 easy ways to drive engagement. So he says it's all about the Instagram stories. If you're a realtor who is ignoring Instagram stories, you might be in for a rude awakening. Instagram has made it crystal clear that the focus is on entertainment. Mm -hmm. Agents who don't get the message will get left in the dust. Agents who uh, dive headfirst into reels and Instagram stories will thrive. It is really that simple. He says that when he started focusing on Instagram stories, his account soared, his overall engagement and following did as well. So it's really, you know, about having a lot of stories. I know you you don't like it when people have too many stories. I hate seeing so many dots. I just flick right through. But it it seems like the sweet spot from the BA and others say that it's about 10 to 12 a day. Yeah, Yeah, like you want one every two hours being being posted up there. You stay in the front, you know, of people's feeds. So Instagram stories, Instagram reels, if you notice all the tweaks and changes, and we did talk about this with Instagram, they are absolutely positioning themselves to be a direct competitor with what TikTok, why TikTok is so popular right now. And so it's going to be more about these short clips, stories, reels, dive into that, dive into this article, which we'll link up above. But the BA, the broke agent and his e-pamphlet are the marketeer Mm -hmm. of the week. Well, what we should do, um, have our viewers though, uh, because our team is doing a real competition tomorrow after our meeting. So make sure if you guys are on Instagram and follow any of our agents, they'll be posting their reels and then whoever gets the most engagement. I actually haven't announced what they're winning yet. So hmm. they may not win anything. They may just they just may win more followers. But they, they just get to hang out with Nicole White for an afternoon. Yeah, keep it keep keep a lookout for it. That'll be I'm excited to see what everyone comes up with. Maybe we can get Eric the the broke agent to, to zoom to in. Vote? And, no, maybe well maybe we can get him to vote to be a voter. But maybe we can get him to FaceTime in and do a like a pep talk for everybody. A on pep the, talk. The start of the competition. You think you, yeah. th- you think he'll be effective in his pep talk? No, I think he <laughs> would be a horrific motivational pep talker. I agree. I kind of agree. Yeah. All right. That, that was a good. See, Nicole, these, these virtual podcasts. I think this. I think this is the best podcast we've ever done. This is the best ever? real world ever. Yeah. I think you say yeah. that all the time. No, no, I, I really believe that this was the best one ever. I mean, <laughs> we chatted Obama, Oprah, Bill Maher, uh, sleepy, Pamphlets. sleeping, sleeping Nicole White. The broke yep. agent. Yep. You know, we, we, my scar. We talked about my scar. We did it all. Zillow. Talked about Halloween. There's never a good episode unless we don't mention Zillow. So. Got it. All mm-hmm. right. Ho- hope you guys are enjoying the podcast. Would love for all of you to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have not done that already. Share this with an agent who would benefit from this content. We got two episodes left till episode 200, which I will be doing. No, we have Live? two. What is this? One ninety seven. We have this three is left. Ninety seven. We have three. Two left, and then we have episode two hundred, which we will be doing I feel like live I have to prepare. together. I feel like we need to like. Yeah. Maybe Do your hair. Like... Get your get your eyebrows and your well, eyelashes. Get it all done. My eye my eyelashes will get done. Are we gonna, right. we should are we gonna have any special guests? Like what's the like what's the lineup? Well, stay tuned. Subscribe so you don't miss it. All right. <laughs> Till then, keep it real, guys. <laughs> <laughs>